All right, you guys. So, all right, a lot of you know that I just saw Fallout Boy on Sunday, and I got to meet them for the first time on Sunday. I don't even know where to start, honestly. Like, it was the most amazing, perfect day of my entire life, and I'm not exaggerating. It was so it was so great. Okay, so before I start this video, I, like, I'm just going to let you guys know that I'm going to insert some clips throughout that I took throughout the day, you know, so it'll just like randomly pop up here and there. But okay, so first thing, I woke up on Sunday and I went to church with my family. I am on my way to church and then I will be on my way to San Antonio. After we went to church, um, we, we ate, and then we, my sister and I hit the road to San Antonio. We live in Austin, so it's about, I don't know, like a two-hour drive to San Antonio from um, Austin, where we live. So, you know, we hit the road, start driving, we listen to, like, Fall Out Boy CDs, like, the entire um, ride, you know, getting nervous, like, we never met them before, like, we knew we were going to meet them, we were freaking out. You know, we stopped at this really sketchy gas station to get drinks, and, you know, we were acting like idiots, but, um... This is probably the sketchiest gas station that we decided to stay at. Not stay, not stay at. <laughs> we just stopped at the gas station to get drinks, and it knows. <laughs> weird. Yeah, so we get to the venue. And this venue in San Antonio is directly next to the AT&T Center. Like, literally, they're, like, they like neighbor each other. And the venue that um, Fall Out Boy was playing at was the Freeman Coliseum. So, we get to the venue. We actually get to the wrong parking lot. We were in the parking lot for the AT&T Center. And then, like, the people, you know, who directed us to get to the um, Freeman Coliseum. So, we get um, to the parking lot. You know, we pay to park. We were there, like, we got there around... I said it's like it was like 2:45 ish because we had to be there at 3:30 to check in for the meet and greet. So we got to the venue, we got like you know ready to you know, to go. We get out and we ask these people um, where will call was because we still I still needed to pick up my tickets since I got the premium tickets like they didn't mail them to you. So we were like looking around and the entire Freeman Coliseum building was completely closed. So we were like. Like, I, we don't know where to go, like, that we were kind of confused, and we walked over by where the AT&T Center was, and there were, um, they were having a dog show, it was kind of crazy, like, there was, like, dogs just everywhere, my sister, like, took a couple cute videos, but I'm just like, why are dogs, <laughs> like, we're in the wrong place, but we saw, like, a bunch of Fall Out Boy fans and stuff, like, you know, in front of the AT&T Center, so I'm like, well, maybe this is where we're supposed to be, but we still couldn't really find where the wool call was, because they had, like, this big tower thing. And that was closed. So my sister and I went up to this guy who was, like, letting people in for the dog show. And we were like, so, um, yeah, we're here for the concert. We don't know where we'll call is. And the guy, like, he had no idea. Like, he was just like, yeah, yeah, Fall Out Boy show is in the next building. And we're like, um, yeah, we know. Like, we just don't know where we'll call is to get our tickets so we can be let in. It was really frustrating, but thankfully there was a parent that was around that heard our whole conversation. She was like, oh, the will calls on the other side of the AT&T Center, and we were like, great. So we walk, we walk over there, you know, we get our tickets. Um, here is my, here is my ticket. Like, see, it says, like, irresistible premium package. So we get our tickets. Every, that all works out, you know, perfectly. So we walk back, and we still have no idea where we're supposed to be. Like, there's a few Fall Out Boy fans in front of the Freeman Coliseum, and it looks, like, completely, like, bare. Like, there was nobody around. And then over by the AT&T Center was, like, a big mob of people. But we knew the Fall Out Boy wasn't even going to be over there. Like, why would why were every, why was everybody in front of the AT&T Center? Like, we were, couldn't figure out why. So we found this, like, little bench in front of the Freeman Coliseum that we sat at just to kind of, like, look in and make sure, like, you know, we were watching both venues to figure out, like, where we, exactly we were supposed to be. We are outside of the venue right now. Yes. No idea where we're supposed to go. No. Everyone's kind of confused because there's two venues. There's the AT&T. I don't even know. This is where Fall Out Boy is performing tonight, but then there's also the AT&T Center right next door. Nobody has any idea. Like, there's some Fall Out Boy fans over here. So 
Christmas, we're gonna riot. Oh yeah. We're gonna riot hard. You know, a few minutes pass, you know, 3.30 rolls around, and we see this guy in, um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but like the wind tour, um, like the crew um, hoodie that they have, like I know Pete wears it a lot in his Snapchats with like the snowflake on the back and says like wind tour, and like the guy had like an all access um, badge on. So we were like, okay, this guy obviously knows like something, he's part of Fall Out Boy's crew, so he'll definitely be able to help us out. So we, um... We, like, he starts talking to this um, mom and daughter who were a, l a little bit ahead of us. So I walk over and kind of listen, and he was saying, yeah, this is the um, this is where you guys need to be for me and greet. I'm going to go get the rest of the people who are over at the 18 CT Center. So he, like, walks over there. So my sister and I are, like, standing there with this mom and daughter, you know, and then he, the guy comes back, and he's like, okay, let's just start the line behind these guys. And we were like, wait, so we're going to be first? <laughs> like, there was probably, like, 150 people there, and we were in the front of the line. All of those people were in the wrong line. Oh my God. Guess what? We're first. We're first. I don't know if that's good. Like that's. I started panicking. I was like, I don't know if I want to be first. Like that's terrifying. So um, my sister and I told the mother and daughter they can like go ahead of us. So like you know that was fine. That long, yeah, they just So we waited for like a little bit while um, everybody was still getting in line and then they opened the doors to the Freeman Coliseum and we walk in and then there's like this little table set up thing. I think I have a couple videos of that. I'll, I'll, po I'll put them in here. Here you guys go. Thank you. Right here. Do we need food? Oh, yeah. Hi. How are you doing? But um... Yeah, they had this like, table set up with all of the VIP laminates and then these um, yellow wristbands. And the guy in the in the wind tour jacket and a couple of the event staff were around, like, checking in people. So, you know, they asked us our last name. Um, and then they handed us our VIP laminates. These are so cool. Like, I wore mine all day and actually slept in it that night because I just didn't want to believe it was actually done. So, like, Fall Out Boy on here. Like, I'm going to wear it right now, actually. I love this thing so much. So we got these, and um, we get in line. They, like, they kind of took us around this corner. Like, we were inside the venue at this point. So we go around this corner, and we're waiting in line. Um, actually, we were, actually, we were in the front of the line, so there really is no line. And we see that the mother and daughter were put in a different line than us. But they were, like, we were kind of, like, right next to each other, but they were in a different line. And um, the mother and daughter ask the event, event worker. She's like, um, why aren't we in the same line as them? And the daughter's like, how come we didn't get one of these? And I guess if you win um, tickets to meet the guys on a, for, like, a contest, like a radio contest, you don't get one of these. And you have to meet them last. So, basically, everybody who had the yellow bracelets got in one line, and everybody who had the, um, the laminates got in another line because we got to meet them first. So, despite my best efforts, we ended up, like, the first people to meet them anyway, and it was terrifying just standing there thinking about it. Like, the actual experience wasn't that terrifying, but just... I, I don't even know like how to feel. I don't know. I don't know. We're first. We're first. Wow, I don't do that. My hands are shaking. <laughs> oh. oh my god. It's I'm gonna try and hold it in. I'm gonna try and hold it in. This is insane though. So we waited in line and probably a half an hour ago it went by, maybe. Like it's kinda hard. Like I you know you like, I remember watching old videos of people talking about their meet and greet experiences, and, like, you don't even really realize how long the time has been because you're so nervous and excited and, like, meeting people and talking to people. Like, we made friends with this one girl who was behind us, and she was there with her dad and her friend, and we were, like, kind of chatting and chatting with them or whatever, kind of, you know, just letting the time go by, trying to ease our nerves. So... All of a sudden, we start hearing, like, sound check. Like, we hear, we weren't sure exactly who was sound checking. We just heard some instruments being played or whatever, and we're like, you know, okay, whatever. And then all of a sudden, we hear um, the drums and the guitars to Sugar, and we all are just like, oh, my God, like, is that them? Are they sound checking? Because, like, literally, we could, like, we couldn't see inside the venue because it was blocked off by a curtain, but, like, it was like right there and we were like we weren't sure if it was like their guitar text just playing the song to sound check or what and then all of a sudden we heard Patrick 
you know, start singing the first verse of Sugar. And everybody in the entire, like, because we were, like, this, in this hallway thing. And everybody just started screaming. Like, it was crazy. And we were just like, oh, my God. Like, they're in there. They're sound checking. And we could hear it. played probably like 10 seconds of sugar and then they played a little bit of the phoenix and that was crazy because we weren't like again we weren't sure if patrick was going to start singing again so i think i have a video of it it's kind of funny like we're like oh it's the phoenix it's the phoenix and my sister goes put on your war paint and then right after she says that you hear patrick say put on your war paint and we just like look at each other like oh my god like that's patrick in there <laughs> And then they decided to sound check Hum Hallelujah for like 15 seconds. And that was just so amazing because I haven't heard Hum Hallelujah live since like 2007. And it, I mean, it was kind of, I mean, it was like 15 seconds of it again. But like still, like that song is so great. And I was just like, oh my God, like. <laughs> actually happening they're actually like they're actually here we're actually about to meet them and that whole that whole thing was just bizarre like just to hear them sound checking and of course like after like they were done with like the little snippet of whatever song they were playing everybody would cheer and you know clap I wonder if they could hear us but anyway so we um finally like it was kind of weird like they had like where the meet and greet were was was in this like weird like shack thing like behind the two like the AT&T Center and the Freeman Coliseum it was behind the two of them so we walk outside the venue and um you know we're in the we're in the line we're walking outside and then we stop and we see like I see the backdrop where that I know that they were behind and I was like oh sh like my god like they're right there and then um the, the follow up boys like rep guy or whatever some what follow boy team guy I don't, I don't even know but he was kind of telling us like some of the rules and like what not to do and all this kind of stuff it was kind of funny actually some of the stuff he said like one of the things was that we couldn't like rearrange the order of the guys like they had to stay in their order like it was like joe patrick pete and then andy and like we couldn't move them around i thought that was kind of funny and then like he was saying like if you guys haven't showered you know, don't touch them, <laughs> you know, just like kind of funny, like things like that. Like, I mean, does that really have to be said? But I mean, I don't know. I guess I understand why. So, you know, he's kind of explaining to us the rules or whatever. And um, he said to put everything like in our bags and put it on a table. So we did all of that. We put all of our stuff on this table because my since me and Shannon were first, we were like the first ones to like do it. So and then he said to grab whatever we wanted signed, you know, and put have it in our hand. And that's the only thing we were supposed to have in our hands. So we were like, OK. So we put our bags on the table and we have our um, things that we want to get signed. And I actually feel really stupid for this because I wanted to get Save Rock and Roll signed, but I wanted them to sign like their pictures inside, you know, like the, their individual pictures, like, you know, like those things. I don't, wrong way there. But I, when I saw them, I forgot to ask them that. So they just signed the front of the booklet, which I am still perfectly okay with, like, I, it's just, uh, it makes me so happy to even just look at it, you know, like Patrick's and Andy's and Pete's and Joe's, like, they all signed this. Okay, so anyway, we got, um, the guy was explaining to us that first we have to hand whatever we want to sign to Joe, and then Joe was going to sign it and pass it down the line. So, um, we, you know, we get up there, and the security guard kind of, like, issues us forward. We're like, okay, it's, it's going to happen now. And we turn the corner, because I, me and my sister went together, because we were, like, freaking out so we we turn the corner and we see joe and he's just smiling and he's like hi how are you to my sister because she was ahead of me she handed him um because she got take this to your grave sign and she handed him take this to your grave and you know he signed it and 
then like my I don't my sister was so composed I don't know how she did it but she went down the line shook all of their hands like introduced herself to them and I'm just like how did she do that but anyway so I handed Joe a uh, save rock and roll and he signed it and he was like hi and I'm like hi like I, I, I think I just said hi I'm pretty sure I said hi and I looked at him, and he's like, how are you? And before, like, I could even answer the question, Patrick was standing right next to me, smiling, or standing right next to Joe, smiling at me. He was like, hi, how are you? And I just, like, looked at him, and I was like, oh, my God, there's Patrick. I might cry. Actually, I, I saw him, and he was, like, I don't know, like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was, like, surreal, kind of, you know? Like, even, like, seeing Joe was kind of surreal just because it's Joe, you know? Joe Troman, like, oh, my God. So I look at Patrick, and I'm like, hi. I think I said hi, like, three times or something. And I just, like, was, like, looking at him, and, you know, he was smiling. And then my sister kind of saved the day because I was just in the frozen, like, awkward kind of pose and my sister's like she she stands she like she shakes all their hands she stands like over next to me we're like facing them and she looks at Pete and she's like I really love you guys a set list for the show I'm really excited you know how do you guys you know decide all these um songs and Pete goes oh thank you so much that's really nice to say and then Joe said oh we just put it in a big raffle and then just pick them out and that's what we play like Joe's Joe's so funny so then we all that kind of lightened the mood we all started laughing and like the guys were laughing or whatever and then the guy was like, okay, it's time for the picture. So um, I, st I stand, of course, I have to stand next to Patrick because I was just like, I, I was in shock. And I can't believe I, I, I'm like so proud of myself that I even got to say like what, I, like I, uh, I can't believe I even said this. But I look at Patrick and he looks at me and I'm like, Patrick, is it okay if I hug you for the picture? And before I could even finish, he grabs me and pulls me towards him. And he's like, of course. And I, I was shaking and he was rubbing my back and he was just ho like holding me while the camera guy was taking the picture. And like our faces are actually touching. Like I'll show you guys the, the picture. Actually, it's one, hold on. I'll show you guys the picture in a second. But our faces are like touching and I like can feel him. And like, he, I don't think he's five foot four, you guys. Like I know it's like everywhere that he's five foot four, but I'm five foot six and he is taller than me in the picture. So that's just like a little side note. But anyway, so like we're like holding each other for the picture. And I don't even know what Shannon, or that's my sister, or like Pete or Andy are doing or anybody else except for me and Patrick. Like that was the, those were, we were the only two people that existed for that, you know, two second time. And I was just like, I cannot believe this happened. So then after like we, after the picture, like, you know, I pulled back from him and I was like, thank you so much. And I, I was like, my eyes were already starting to tear up. And he was like, he just smiled at me with this, in his eyes. Oh my God. And he smells so good. So, ugh. so we just like kind of look at each other, you know, and I say thank you. And then like I walk back and then I realize I didn't even say anything to Andy or Pete. And I was like, ugh. like, and they, they was really rushed, especially since we were the first people. Like it was super rushed. So like before we left really quickly, I said, to, I looked over to Pete and Andy and I was like, I really hope you guys have a great show. And they were like, oh, thank you. I hope you enjoy it. And then we left. <sighs> like literally the second we got, like we went back around the backdrop and grabbed our stuff. I'm like, I just, like, almost lost lost it. I was starting to sob, like, slowly just sob. And then the craziest thing happens, okay? So we're walking back, like, passing all the people who are in line. And Fall Out Boy's rep comes after us. And he's like, hey, girl, stop. You know, come back, come back. So we were like, oh, my God. Like, did we do something wrong? Like, did we upset them? Like, are we going to get kicked out? Like, we were afraid. So he didn't even tell us what was going on. So we started walking. And then once we caught up to him, he was like, the camera didn't work for you guys' picture, so you guys get to go again. And we're like what? And I, I look at my sister and like my makeup is already starting to rub, run down my eyes. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. And she was like helping me. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't have them see me cry. I can't have them see me cry. Oh my God. So then we, we were like, we got in front of everybody and we were like, look at each other. Like we're going to meet them again. Like that, what? Like we're meeting them again. So, you know, they, the guy issues us forward again and we come back around the corner and we're like, Hey, we're back. Like, I think we both, my sister and I've said the exact same thing. And then they, they, they look kind of confused for a second. And Joe looked at the camera guy. And he was like, what do we do wrong? Like, it was so cute. And, like, they were like, oh, no, nothing. The camera just malfunctioned for a second. So we get back, you know, into the order just for the picture because already, we already had our stuff signed. And I, I look at Patrick. And he goes, oh, no, don't worry. I know the drill. And grabs me in for another hug. I'm just like.
Like, is this real life? Like, I don't, I just, oh my gosh, so I got to hug him again, and the second time, I wasn't as nervous as the first time, maybe it's because it was just happening so fast, that, like, when I was hugging him, I, like, really grabbed onto him and, like, held him, and he was holding me, and it was just, it was magical, it was the most magical experience I've ever had in my entire life. So after the picture, you know, I said thank you to Patrick again, you know, and he said, I hope you enjoy the show, and then we left, and I don't, I didn't say anything else to anybody else, because I was just so, like, in the moment, and then that's when I just started sobbing again, and I was, I was walking past, um, the other people who were waiting in line, they were, like, staring at me, like, sobbing, and I was like, oh, god, they probably think I'm nuts, and my sister's like, it's okay, don't cry, it's okay, like, I'm just like, oh, my god, like, it was incredible, like, it was so rushed, like, I'd say both times combined, we had, like, maybe a minute with them, but it is so worth it. Like, I am, like, I'm getting me and greet from now on for Fall Out Boy shows. Like, that was, it was incredible. Like, I don't, I can't even, like, fathom it. Like, I, I mean, I can remember it, but it's, like, surreal, kind of, you know? Like, did that actually happen? So, we go back into the venue. Like, we're supposed to get early entry into the venue, but, like, they were really unorganized at this um, venue. Nobody really knew what was going on. Because, like, they were still sound checking AWOL Nation. And so we walk, we were walking around the venue, and the merch table was just finally set up, and it was, like, it was crazy. Like, it was just finally, like, right when we walked up to it, they were, like, ready to take money, and we could buy stuff. So we we're like, okay, well, we might as well buy merch, you know, since we're here and there's no line. So I got the tour shirt, as you guys can see, and it has all of the dates on the back. I don't even know if you can see it, but I'm sure everyone's seen what it looks like. It's pretty cool. I really like it. And then I got this Fall Out Boy hoodie. I thought this was really cute. I don't know. And then I also bought my sister a tour shirt. And then, where is it? I also decided to get a, um, a copy of White Noise, Paris's record. And um, they signed all of them. Like, they posted on their Instagram, like, before the tour, that all of the White Noise copies um, they were going to sell were going to be personally signed. So I thought that was really cool. And I don't actually have this yet. And since my aux cord and my van broke, I can actually listen to this. And I, this is what I've been listening to, like, on constant since the tour. And I love I love this record. So, I mean, I'm really happy I have this as well. So, yeah, that's what I got merch-wise. So, after we got merch, we none of the food was open yet. None of the drinks were open yet. So, we were like, okay, well, you know, let's just, you know, walk around. And so, we were walking, and we ha accidentally run right into Paris as meet and greet. Like, they were, like, right in front of us. So, of course, I had to take some, like, creeper videos. Like, I'll post those in here. Yeah, that was really cool. And, like, Lynn is stunning. Like, she is so freaking pretty. Like, I was just, like, watching her. And I'm surprised the event staff didn't, like, yell at me to, like, leave. Because they were, like, watching me take videos of them. But, I mean, I thought that was really cool. And I wanted to say hi to her. But, she, you know, obviously she was talking to other people. And I didn't buy a Paris meet and greet. So I didn't want to, like, be, like, that weirdo. But, yeah. So after that, they started kicking us out. I mean, even though we weren't supposed to be, like, kicked out. We were supposed to get early entry into the venue, so we were, like, trying to explain, like, uh, me and my sister and a couple other people were trying to explain, like, hey, like, we have VIP never gets kicked out, and they were like, okay, well, we'll just make this, it was a side entrance, they're so, like, we'll just make this the VIP re-entrance, and we were like, okay, fine, so my sister and I go back outside, and we sit down on the ground, you know, in the very front of the VIP entrance, you know, we were just, like, reminiscing, talking to people, you know, whatever, and then I see this girl that I recognized from YouTube, she's actually one of my favorite YouTube YouTubers, um, Jordan, I don't know if any of you guys um, are subscribed to her, but I saw her, and I was like, oh, Jordan, I want to talk to her and see how her meet and greet went, you know, because I don't know if you, if you guys follow her, you know that she has kind of a relationship with Patrick, and so I talked to her, you know, and I met her, and she is so sweet, she's so nice, and I was really glad I did that, um, definitely go check out her channel if you haven't. Like, she actually just made a video, um, about the, um, 
the show. So you guys should definitely check out her channel as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, after I talked to her, um, there was a couple, there was this mom who came up to us, and she was like, is this the VIP entrance? And we were like, yeah, like, they just made it the VIP entrance, and she was like, oh my gosh, she's like, my daughter is in the front of the regular entrance for, like, the regular, like, non-VIP people, and she was like, and you guys are gonna get let in first, and we were like, yeah, and she's, like, her mom was, like, freaking out, and we were like, well, you know, we could pretend that she's our sister, and she could come and sit and get in right here, because we didn't have pit, we just had seats, but, um, her daughter did, so she was like, you guys would do that? And we were like, yes, of course. <laughs> like, of course we would. So she went and got her daughter and brought her daughter back because her mom only had, um, she had her mom at seats and she didn't have VIP, but her daughter had VIP and Pitt. So, you know, we hung out with her for a little bit and that was really cool. So after that, we got led into the venue. And since me and my sister did not have Pitt, we only had seats, we decided to get some food and some water because we were like dying and so after we got that we went to our seats and we actually had really great seats like I'm so happy with our seats so um yeah we got our we sat in our seats and just kind of listened just to the music that was playing like reminiscing about our meet and greet and then Paris came on and they put on a phenomenal show love them I think they're so good like I'll put some clips of their set in here but oh my god like they are so good I definitely want to see a headlining show from them they're I really like them like I'm definitely a fan of them so after Paris um we you know we're waiting for AWOL Nation and AWOL Nation came on and I don't even really know how to describe them they were kind of weird like not like in a bad weird I just couldn't tell, like, what they were. Like, were they rock? Were they metal? Were they, like, screamo? Like, because all of their songs were so, like, different. And, like, I'm not saying it was bad, but, like, I really liked some of the instrumental songs that they did, where it was they're just their drummer and guitar player and keyboardist and all that stuff. And there was just, like, instrumental, like, hard instruments. And I really liked that. I was like, this is, this is good. It was so loud, though. Like, that was the one complaint. Like, they turned up everything, and it was so loud. It was like, I'm going to get a headache, you know, before Fall Out Boy even comes on. So, and then they ended with Sail, which was actually great because everybody knows that song and it was really cool. Well, nation we wait for then you know, we're gonna wait for follow boy to come on and they dropped this like big curtain down so we couldn't see like any of the backstage stuff but since like where we were we were on the very side we could see pretty well like what was going on like we could see like, their guitar techs tuning their instruments and stuff like that I thought that was really neat so um yeah the show starts and it was amazing it was such an amazing show put on an amazing amazing show but I think the set list made it like so much better like they played so many amazing songs and we were close like we weren't as close as we were for boys of summer but like we had pretty good seats and it was so good like they played like all my favorite songs like they played take over the breaks over <laughs>
cane, like. during 4th of July. And Save Rock and Roll was like a magical experience for that entire room. Like, I don't know if it was like that at every show, but like, you know, when everyone's chanting and stuff, like, it was just felt like so like magical and Pete felt it too because right after Save Rock and Roll he was like oh my gosh he's like thank you guys like I love how you know we can inspire you but then there are times where you guys inspire us and I was just like so Pete felt how epic that song was and how like amazing it was like everybody was screaming and singing and crying it was like that was probably my favorite song of the night and then Disloyal Order was also like oh that song live is so beautiful like Patrick just his voice is just... And it was, like, weird, too, because, like, thinking about, like, we, I was just hugging him, and... Ugh. So, yeah, the show was just phenomenal. It, it was an amazing show. I loved the stage setup. It was so cool. Like, I really hope they do some cool stuff with their stages in the future. But, yeah, it was amazing. It was such an amazing show, such an amazing experience, such an amazing opportunity to meet them and talk to them. And, you know, and I and just, ugh, I, I don't even, I can't even, like, I don't even know what else to say about it. But, yeah, after, after the show, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have the worst post-concert depression, like, you know, in a, in a few hours. But the thing is, like, I was on cloud nine for, like, 48 hours after the show. Like, I was so happy. I was so excited. I was so grateful. I never had that horrible post-concert depression that I always have after shows. I was just so happy. I kept, you know, reliving my, my meet and greet in my head, and I was like, this is so weird. Like, why aren't I, like, super depressed about it? And then the next day, around, like, 3.30 is the, the meet and greet pictures are posted and then again it just all like starts over again you know and I see my picture and I'm like oh my god like it happened like it wasn't a dream it was the one of the best days of my entire life everything went right we ended up first in the meet and greet we got to meet them twice we ended up first in line for the VIP entrance we had amazing seats the cellist was absolutely breathtaking like I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't even know, like, I love them so much, and, and, they are playing the Final Four in Houston in next week, next Friday, and I am going with one of my friends, and we, we're gonna see them again, and since it's, like, just a festival, I'm hoping maybe, I'll be able to meet them after and have, like, a long conversation with them just because it was just so special to me and so important to me. And it's also Panic! at the Disco is going to be there as well. And I've actually never seen Panic! at the Disco live. I know that's pretty crazy. But, yeah, it'll be my ninth, ninth time seeing Fall Out Boy and my first time seeing Panic!, which is, like, unheard of. But, anyway, that's going to be really fun. So, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if anybody has any questions about the meet and greet process or anything, just let me know because I did it twice by accident, like, ah, uh, I don't even know, okay, well, I hope you guys all have a great week, and I will see you guys next time, bye.